Hey Frosttooth, it's Kim. It is uh, the 19th of August. My youngest daughter just went to her first day of preschool for this year, so I only have one child at home. I'm ready to make floss tube number 30 and tell you about what I stitched on this past week. Um, I didn't get as much stitching done as I wanted to because for the School of Magical Stitches and Literature, um, a lot of you know that I am a Ravenclaw prefect, prefect and I'm one of the uh, grading prefects, so we were, we've been trying to catch up on our grading before we get to the end of year five um, with all the extra credit and, and books and stuff. So we did some grading with that, helped out some of the other grading prefix that, you know, this time of year is really busy and we just haven't been able to get to everything like we wanted to, but we're catching up. So I finished my homework. Um, this week's homework was the owls. Uh, so you could either do 100 per class or 200 per class, depending if you wanted exceeding expectations or to earn an outstanding in each of the classes for your owl. Well, I'm an overachiever and I told you that I wanted to finish this whip that was, you know, semi UFO this year. So I did 200 per task and it actually didn't take me as far as I thought it would. Um, even after all that counting, I thought I'd get farther, but I didn't. So um, this is the class schedule sale by Armada Designs. Um, I don't have a finished picture to give you because it was a mystery sale, um, but I, I showed it to you what I had so far uh, last week. So what I did is I finished up Bungle Studies. That is completely as charted. For Arithmancy, the um, textbook is as charted, and then they had um, a feather quill. But since I had put a quill up in charms for Wingardium Leviosa, I didn't want another quill. So I, um, kind of following uh, Cloud's Factory's Pixel People, I made um, a Hermione with some adjustments. She is quite pale, but I can see it a little bit better in person. And then I finished this border, which had a corner missing. I did this complete border, which has some missing spots, but that's because of the Cornish Pixie that will go here, because Defense Against the Dark Arts is such a long class title, it takes up almost the entire block. So this will be a Stag Patronus, and then a Cornish Pixie, and I still have Care Magical Creatures and Divination left. So I've got two and a half blocks left, um, so 2,000 stitches. Saw this much work. I did the flashlight and the rubber ducky and all these two class titles, that, that, border, border, and the, and that. So it doesn't really seem like 2000, but you know, this big textbook took up a lot. So, um, let's see. I did change the colors in the Patronus because I, I didn't like the ones that she had chosen. Um, and for divination is charted as a big crystal ball i may reduce it and also fit like a teacup in there for for reading tea leaves not sure yet i haven't charted that one out and cure magical creatures as um her chart design is just buckbeak in the bottom of it because again cure magical creatures is a long class title so there isn't much space so um I did get tired of working on this one because it's not one that I'm really into. Um, so, and it took me until Friday evening. I worked on it Monday, Tuesday, when, or did I work on it Monday? Yeah, I did. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It took me that long to get um, 2,000 stitches done. So... And then a little trick, I don't know if everybody knows this, but when you're working close to the Q-snap frame and you have a grime guard and the grime guard tends to get in the way, like if you're on a corner like this and you don't want to constantly be, be holding the grime guard out of the way. I saw this on somebody's floss tube where all you do is you just, instead of being like this, you just put one twist in the fabric and it kind of allows you, it still holds the excess fabric and, and, you know, keeps the other fabric clean, but
but it allows you more space to get closer to that edge. So just a handy little tip. I don't know when I'll pull this out again, but I do have that finish goal for this year. So that was my homework. And um, then I was really stepping it up to try to get the blue night done on Camelot because we were approaching the you know 15th of August, the middle of the of the month. Now I didn't officially start working on the blue night on the 1st of August. I think I started the 2nd or the 3rd. Um, and I was doing those 200 or at least 200 stitches a night. Um, I did also, so Friday night I finished my homework. Friday night I also stayed up a little past my bedtime to finish the blue night. And then I've since um, started stitching on the green night, uh, Saturday, Sunday, and I've already worked on it today as well. So my goal is since I finished, let's see, Friday was, let's see, today's the 19th. Let me do math in my head. Friday was the 16th. Um, and I know since I didn't start on him the first, I know for a fact I didn't start on him the first. I'm going to say it took me two weeks to do the blue night. Well, I want to have a finish goal for the whole piece by the end of the month. So I need to do the green night faster. Um, so when I posted the finish of the blue night, I said that I was going to, um, try for, instead of 200 stitches a day, I was going to try for 250. Um, but then I did some math because I have my stitch counts, um, and because my minimum was 200 a night, but there was other nights I stitched more, especially those last two nights, I know I did over 300. My average per day for the time for the blue night is around 250. So now I need to know, now I know I need to do more than 250 a night in order to have time to finish uh, the lazy daisy leaves that go all the way around, uh, the beads, initials and date down there. I've got everything else. I just need to fill in the little bit of backstitch for those two and um, the backstitching in the jousting scene. All that, all that gray to create the dais. So look closely at the blue night and the green night. The blue night will look exactly like that. But the green night, you'll see that his shield is kind of shell shaped. He's got a red horse. Just like my Spencer and green barding. Um, and also seeing this Brittany from Ingleside Imaginarium, uh, we were talking about uh, going to Renaissance festivals and how usually when you go watch the jousting there, there's always a good night and a bad night. And she asked me which one's the good night or the bad night or if I'm going to name them. I have a red horse in one of my favorite colors is green. So who do you think the good knight is? It's gonna be the red horse. If I can get the, the glare off and get it to focus. So it's gonna be the red horse. That's the good knight. And then also because it's blue with gold accents. Blue and gold. What school did I go to? The other University of Michigan. So yeah. Blue and gold is the evil knight. We'll, we'll say that Jesse Marie is supporting that one. So, um, I did 250 a night Saturday. Yesterday, I, knowing after I did the math, I, I did over 300, and today I did over 300. So, there you go. Let me get this to focus. The blue knight is done. The red horse's legs are done and I'm starting on the barding and the shields. So, I know I posted a, a picture of the blue knight in the uh, Teresa Winsler cross stitch group and people are like, don't make it a race, don't, don't push yourself. Well, they don't know me and the fact that I need goals like this to motivate myself. So if I give myself a, you know, a little goal like 250 a night, 300 a night with aiming to, to finish by the end of the month, I'm going to get there. 
There may be a few days as we get closer and we see see the green knight develop. There might be a few days where I stitch only on Camelot just to ensure that will happen. I'm going to meet my goal. This is going to be an August finish. Even if, okay, so we'll talk about homework this week in, in uh, School of Magical Stitches. And after this week, there's only one more week. Um, I don't know what the homework will be, but I'm going to finish my personal goal of completing this for August. So, and I may even, you know, if I get tired of doing one over one, one of the nights this week, I may start on the Lazy Daisies. Just get that out of the way. I may start on the beading that's that I can access right here. Just to get those done and have less. So there's Camelot Sampler by Teresa Wensler. And then see this weekend is the last weekend before school starts locally. Um, I told you last Monday it was like 60 something degrees. Uh, this weekend it got cool enough I actually had to put a sweatshirt on. But today the high is 88. So we're back to warmer temperatures for the time being. Um, so our neighborhood, they're like, uh, one last chance to enjoy the summertime and meet all our new neighbors because it seemed like just about 50% of the houses in the neighborhood got new occupants over the summer with everyone PCSing, which uh, is a, means permanent change of station. Um, and that's just a quirk. It's not normal. It's not usually that high a percentage. But there was, uh, for this base, one of the career fields, um, the personnel team was not rotating people through like they should. So it seems like they're like, okay, well, we're going to start rotating more people, which mean meant that there's a whole lot of people that left and there's a whole lot more people coming in and the moving companies cannot keep up. So some people had to pay to move themselves and do like where you get the trailer delivered to your house and you put everything in it and then they move it. Yeah. So we had two neighborhood parties to go to this weekend. So I didn't have as much time to stitch plus the grading that I already talked about, but I did put in a little more uh, time on Super Size Museum Shelf Color Expansion. Now, I wanted to do this one for, by the numbers, 2400 in full coverage phonetics. But because this is a color expansion, because it's the frame is four feet wide and it takes me, you know, it, it's a big piece to move around. Um, I just, I can't, I'm not getting my stitches in as fast on this one. So even though I want to get 4,800 tent stitches done, it's not going to happen in one month. So I'm going to move this piece to buy the numbers 1,200, which means I only need 2,400 tent stitches. I think I'm at 1,800 right now. So uh, six, 600 or so more tent stitches and I'll be done with this piece this month. I hope to at least get one partial page finish. I'm working in uh, the dinosaur corner. So I put in about 450 stitches since last week. So 450 stitches, still can't really tell. I mean, it's, it's the boring part, it's the floor. A little bit of greenery. But you can see now where the page ends and hopefully I'll have some time this week to, you know, keep chipping away at that. A little bit here, a little bit there. Keep giving that one attention. This is one I think where um, it won't happen this year, but I think it would benefit from like a, a daily, a daily amount. So, okay, this week in the School of Magical Stitches, the homework is bulletin board notices. Um, Professor Umbridge has been uh, injured by the centaurs and is in the hospital wing. She's no longer in charge. Our headmistresses are back after the battle at the ministry. And so there's it's three tasks, well, two tasks and a bonus. 
Um, the first task is to celebrate the 11 Death Eaters that were caught at the Ministry of Magic to work on your 11th whip in your whip list, your whip album. And the second task is because Umbridge is no longer there to put in 300 stitches in any color that's not pink or any colors, multiple colors, as long as none of them are pink. And then the bonus task to earn more points is 400 stitches in a piece that is related to the joke the Weasley twins pulled on the fifth floor at Hogwarts. And luckily, I can fit one whip into all three tasks. On my uh, whip album, my 11th whip on my list is Big Red Ship of Life. So as you know, I'm working on this one every single month, a little bit each month for the next four years or so to represent our time here in North Dakota. I am on page three. I already have the border done. Now this is my 11th whip, so I'll be putting 300 stitches into it for that. It is not pink because I am stitching it in DMC 3808 which is a teal green. And as far as the joke on the fifth floor, well, if you've read the book, that's where the twins uh, created a swamp. Okay, what does this look like to you? Looks like an alligator. Other creepy crawlies that, that live in, in swampy waters, right? So I'm going to be put in, putting in a thousand stitches on Big Red Ship of Life. And just to remind you what that looks like. There we go. So, page three borders are done. And it'll be fairly simple just to start filling, filling in motifs. Again, this is on 28 count. Last time I said it was tea dyed, it's mushroom. 28 count mushroom Lugana uh, MCG textiles. Um, so we'll put in a thousand stitches for that and that will be my August stitches in Big Red Ship of Life. Now, since I am changing the museum shelf to buy the numbers 1200, that means I need a new full coverage piece for my buy the numbers 2400. And you already know that for a previous week this month for homework, I put in a thousand stitches on... Macintosh Mail. This is a full coverage piece. It qualifies with our 95% full coverage rule for the full coverage, full coverage fanatics group. Uh, and <clears throat> the thousand stitches I put in, I did more than that, but counting half stitches as 0.5, it equaled out to a thousand. And because it's full stitches, I don't have to double it. So I've already, I'm almost halfway done with by the numbers. I can all I have to do is delete my posts and, and redo them with my starting points. So that's what that looks like. I will continue to work on this big building and put or or the trees. So we'll we'll flesh out that building some more to get my 1400 stitches. I don't know if I'll get that done this week. This is just a possibility of things I may work on. One other thing that I kind of went, went over my head, I, I didn't see it, is that I have a friend who lives in California. Um, she had a daughter last year. Actually, her, her daughter's birthday is the same as my youngest daughter's birthday. So her uh, daughter is just over one year old now, and she is expecting another uh, child here in October. Um, this is... A friend who's also experienced miscarriages so it's it's a really big deal when you finally carry a baby all the way to term and so for her first child uh, she had an elephant themed room so I stitched her an elephant piece last year that was one baby elephant and it said dream big little one well uh, daughter number two is gonna have a panda themed room so for some reason I didn't even think about the fact that Oh, I should stitch her a piece too. Until I saw on Instagram that the theme of the room was pandas. And all of a sudden it's August and the baby is due in October. And yeah, I should have started on this months ago. Once I knew what their uh, nursery theme was. But 
So I sent her a bunch of patterns on Etsy and she looked on Etsy and she found a panda that she liked. She also wants the quote, though she be but little, she is fierce. And we also discussed a flower border. Well, it's there's no one pattern that meets all of those, but I'm going to buy the panda pattern. It's not hard to chart in some words. And I have uh, some other, you know, patterns in my stash that have uh, flower borders. So I'm going to use my charting software and, and put it all in and make sure it looks good and show that to her before I start stitching on it. So no guarantee that I'll have that done before the baby girl is born, but it's another thing for me to work on. So hopefully now that um, my oldest daughter will start school on Thursday, I'll have some, you know, some hours to myself in the afternoon where I can work on that uninterrupted and, you know, get it all visualized and see what works best and then um, get it approved, if you will, by, by the mom and start working on that. So the other thing I did this week was two very quick FFOs, um, pieces that I've, I've had sitting around for a long time and I finally figured out how I was going to fully finish them. This literally only took like half an hour. So the first one is Floss Daily. I believe this is uh, a pattern by Wee Little Stitches on Etsy. I will put the link below in the description box. This one, I did satin stitches for the bobbins. It's on, you know, really old cream Ada, so you can't really see the, the white part of the bobbins that well here on the camera, but I can see it. And this is just one where I, I just chose floss out of a box. I think this, this was actually mostly uh, my grab, my grandma's floss. Except for maybe this, this one was one of the DMC variegated, I believe. So this is just uh, stretched over an artist canvas and stapled on the back. It's re this Ada is that really stiff, hard to work with. Um, so that wasn't fun, but that's what staple guns are for. It, it holds things. And I'm not going to enter this in the fair, so I don't really worry that my corners aren't perfect. But just a tongue-in-cheek piece to hang in the bathroom because double entendre, right? Floss daily. And then the other piece, this was a warm-up because I haven't stretched a piece over canvas in a while. The other piece is one that I care much more about. My model of my original design. In this house, Pride and Prejudice, I've shown this before, I've read it to you, it is in my Etsy shop. So this is a uh, 11 by 14 canvas, same principle. Um, my husband helped me with this one, so I, I lined it up on the canvas and I was holding it. We did one staple top, bottom, side and side first as I was stretching it and pulling it to get, um, get the fabric taut. And then um, just a little bit, like I was stretching it making sure the words were straight and I wasn't pulling the words out of whack. Um, and I would stretch it and I had it facing me and I'd stretch it and hold it until I'm putting a staple right there. And so he would. And then it's, it's a very, it's not really tedious. It's a methodical process is the word I was looking for, to do like, okay, so you did this, the middle staples, all four sides, and then you start working out from there, these two, and then I flip it over and I do these two. So you're, you're stretching it evenly, um, every direction so that you end up with a piece that's centered and stretched. So there's no fabric puckers in it. So there we go. In my house, Pride and Prejudice. Two more FFOs. Also, hopefully now, um, when my girls are in school, I my goal is one FFO a week. I don't think that's too ambitious. Uh, it may be with all the other stitching goals I have. Um, but I'm going to aim for one FFO per week and see, or one, either FFO or project bag, something, you know, something that's crafty without being um, stitching itself. So, all right, I think that's all I have for you. Um, 
I hope all the moms, congratulations, you made it to the end of the summertime. Now it's time to uh, get those kids back in school and, and remember they know things. Teach them. So, um, yeah. Thanks to all my new, new subscribers and um, thanks for spending time with me. Comments, likes, and all that. Everybody have a good stitching week and we'll see you later. Bye guys.